very pertinent. I want to bring your attention to the book of 2 Kings chapter number 2 verse number 19. 2 Kings chapter number 2 verse number 19. Allow me to just read something and then we will continue to build. The scripture says, And the men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of the city is pleasant, as my Lord can see, but the water is not, and the ground is barren. And he said, Bring me a new cruise, and put salt therein. And they brought it to him. And he went forth unto the spring of the waters, and cast the salt in there, and said, Thus saith the Lord, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from hence any more death or barren land. Verse 21, And he went forth unto the spring of the waters, and cast the salt in there, and said, Thus saith the Lord, I have healed these waters, there shall not be from thence any more death or barren land. Brothers and sisters, the church, even you who is following us this morning, there is a very well-known scripture that is quoted everywhere, even especially during this time, and that is 2 Chronicles chapter number 7, verse number 13, verse number 14, and verse number 15. Specifically in verse number 14, where it is written that if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, pray unto me, repent, and I will heal, I will hear and heal the land. Now there's something I want to just show. We know who Elisha is. Elisha was an understudy of a great man of God called Elijah. And we know the story because the Bible scholars know this story too. That Elisha is the one when he was asked by Elijah, what do you desire? He said, I desire a double portion of your spirit to come on me. This is Elisha. And after the transaction where Elijah and Elisha, that there was a separation and Elijah was taken away, Elisha saw that the mantle of Elijah came. He took it, the Bible says, and he hit on the Jordan and the waters parted. So this is Elijah. Elijah, with the receiving of the double portion of the Spirit, he then moved on. And he, where we read in the book of Second Kings, is that where Elisha, is now worth the prophet school so this is what the men come while elisha is in a specific city they come to him and they say to him look at the situation of this city it is very pleasant but the water of the city is not good now, brothers and sisters, you know, even if the land can look all good, even if the land can look green, if the water in that land is not good, we know death is imminent. We can almost say it's like what we are seeing here today with the coronavirus in the world that there is a disease that has broken out. If the water of the city is not good, so we know that death is imminent, we know that there is going to be all types of diseases happening, we also know that if the water of the land is not good, you cannot plant the seed because it will not grow. And we also know that the plantation and the vegetation is going to wither away because the water of the city 
is not good. These men, they report to Elisha and say the city looks good. It's very interesting, brothers and sisters, isn't it? That at times things can look on the surface that they are okay. But actually beneath the surface that death is brewing, death is developing. This is the case that they are reporting here to Elisha. Now also to speak a little bit about the profile of Elisha. Elisha as a prophet. Once he receives this report, he says to the men, and it's important that you must see and hear the Father speak even at this time because there is deeper truth that we must all come to even during this time in 2020. So Elijah says, bring me, bring me a new cruise. And then he says, put salt therein. And they brought it in. Now allow me to just stand little bit and pause there. Elisha says, bring me a cruise and put salt in. Now, when we speak about God in his sovereignty, we're speaking about God, him as a covenant keeping God. So God is known as a covenant keeping God. Now, when we look at the covenants of God is that God will honor his covenant he will keep his covenant and he will adhere to the covenant that he made with men important to mention what we learn and study with the Old Testament covenants that there was this particular covenant the covenant of Saul now to also submit to you as you're following this truth is that so we see this the covenant of salt applicable both for the Levitical priesthood but we also see the covenant of salt applicable for the Davidic kingship so both we see the covenant of salt for the Levitical priesthood but also the lineage, the kingly lineage of the Davidic covenant, we see salt there. So then important as we look at this is then how, how salt is then used to deal with a situation that affected the whole city. So this is what the prophet do. The prophet then went to the spring of the waters. The Bible says in 2 Kings 2, 21. He went to the spring of the waters. And when he got to the spring of the waters in the city, he cast the salt in the springs of the water. And then he said, thus saith the Lord. I have healed these waters. There shall not be from any more death or barren land. Now, brothers and sisters, this is the transition. This is where things move from barrenness, where they become fruitful again. This is where things move from disease and sickness, where we see healing and restoration of health. This is where we see the, the withering plantations receiving its strength and the flowers and the trees blossoming again. But what is it, what is it that brought about this shift is what was in the hand of the prophet when the prophet took the salt and poured that salt into the springs of the water. This is where we see how this city, how this land, how this land was healed. This land was healed when the prophet took the salt 
and poured the salt in the springs of the water and declaring and saying, Thus says the Lord, that I have healed these waters. And me and you know, me and you know, when the waters are healed, life comes back. Me and you know, when the waters are healed, plantations are revived. Me and you know, when the water is limp, there is healing that is coming to the inhabitants and the cities and the people that live in the city. But in us transitioning, in us transitioning, is then to share this truth with you. So we see here in the book of, of 2 Kings where this prophet in his hand is using salt, using salt and healing and turning around a very dire situation. A very dire situation. It could be, and I allow me to just submit and say, it could have been that as a result of, of the water that was not well, that was not healed, that there was a pandemic too. That there was a pandemic in the land too. Because if you drink water that is not healed, all types of sicknesses bring, we could say that there was a pandemic too as a result of the waters that were not healed. But in us transitioning and coming to where we are is then to come to first truth that we see somebody who was concealed in the Old Testament and is coming into into the New Testament out of the realm of eternity and coming and being revealed in the realm of time. His name is Jesus. Is then the is then this Jesus? Is then this Jesus? Where the angel came and said, You must call him Emmanuel. God with us. You must call him Jesus. Because he's the one that will save the people. It is Jesus. It is Jesus. Who comes to his disciples after he had, he had elected and chosen the twelve. He then comes. It is this Jesus that comes and says something very pertinent that is still connected to the covenant of God because the covenant of God for Saul was both applicable for the Levitical priesthood but also the kingly lineage of the Davidic covenant. It is thus Jesus who comes and introduces and says something very profound. Jesus then when he looks at the people, when he looks at his disciples, he says to them, you the salt of the earth. Jesus. You are the salt of the earth. Yes. Our God is a covenant keeping God. Yeah. And his covenant of salt is still here because he's the one that comes from the lineage of David and the covenant of salt is still here Jesus says you are you yes. you are the salt of the earth brothers and sisters when we study types and shadows we can see the shadow with the prophet Elisha we can see the shadow we can see the type there where we see in the hand of the prophet how he has taken salt when there was there was there was a horrible case of water in the city how in the hand of the prophet he has taken salt and poured the salt in the springs of water to heal it we see that as a shadow the real thing the antitype to the shadow is that Jesus he comes in a hundred percent God 
and a hundred percent men. He has something in his hand. He does not have the prophetic in his hand. He comes with the apostolic in his hand. And as he comes with the apostolic in his hand, he says to the apostolic generation, you are the salt of the earth. Brothers and sisters, now that Jesus, through the covenant of salt, declared to the apostolic generation whom he has come to usher in and said to them, you are the salt of the earth. There is then a responsibility upon us when the waters in the land causes disease. There is then a responsibility on us when the water in the land causes a pandemic like coronavirus. There is a responsibility then upon us when there is sickness and nothing can be planted because economies are dying. Businesses are dying. We see the church when we see that there is a pandemic. Brothers and sisters, the core of this is the water that is not healed. But Jesus comes and he says, you, me, and everybody else, everybody else who has received his message, he says, you, you are the salt of the earth. But I want you to see this as we build this truth. Jesus says this in Matthew chapter number five, verse number 13. He says this, you are the salt. 